Hi, in this lesson we'll learn about the IR sensor. The IR sensor is a little module that uses IR signal in order to receive data to it. There is IR receiver and IR transmitter. This sensor particularly is an IR receiver, not an IR transmitter. It's important to understand the difference. Usually we use remote as transmitter module, and this module is able to receive the remote controller codes, which we call it IR receiver. For example, if we are an air conditioner, and then we have a controller for the air conditioner. The air conditioner itself has an IR receiver module into it, but the air conditioner remote is the IR transmitter. So later on we will use a transmitter device such as remote to send signal to the IR receiver and see if we can get it. The IR receiver has three pins. First one is signal, then we have VCC and GND. VCC and GND provide power to the module and signal used to read the information from the receiver once it receives the IR codes. Now when we understand how does it work, let's head into our microcontroller and see how can we connect it and make it work all together. Now that we know a little bit more about our IR sensor, it's time to understand how can we connect it into our Arduino device. First let's take a look what we have right here. Right here we have the IR receiver controller, which is the IR remote. We will use it to transmit the data to the IR receiver. This is not a receiver module, this is a transmitter. The IR receiver is right here. So once we press a button, the IR receiver will receive the signal and transfer it to the Arduino device. Right here, as we showed earlier on, we have the IR receiver. And the IR receiver have three pins. First one is the signal pin, then we have VCC, and then we have GND. Now let's take a look, closer look at our Arduino device to see how we connect it. The first most obvious cables are the red and black. Red is for VCC, we connect it to 5V, and black is for GND, which we just connect to the ground. Now we have the yellow cable, which is the data cable. We will connect it to pin number 7, which is right here. And that's basically how we connect the IR to our Arduino device. Very easy and very straightforward. Now, once we have everything ready, the remote controller, the IR receiver, and the Arduino connected to our computer, it's time to move to the IDE to understand how can we program it and make it work. So now we are inside our Arduino IDE. As we can see, right here we have a live stream of our Arduino device with an IR device and a remote control. The IR receiver is connected by pin number 7 to here, and we have VCC, GND, and the remote controller that we will use to transmit the data to the IR receiver right here. Now let's walk through our code to understand how does it actually work. In order to make the IR receiver work, we need to use a library called IR Remote. The IR Remote, we can include it using the include command. Now we will set up the IR receiver pin to pin number 7, and the LED pin, which is the built-in Arduino LED, to pin number 13. We cannot change it as it's built in into the Arduino device. Then we initialize the IR Remote library with the IR receiver pin and decode the results using results variable. In the setup, we set up the pin mode LED pin to output the built-in LED that we mentioned before, and we initialize the serial connection with 9600 baud rate. Then we enable IR in to enable the IR receiver module. In the main loop software, we have multiple of things. First, we need to understand if the IR receiver module received data. If it received data, we can proceed. We will print the IR code and the bits that received by the IR sensor, IR receiver. And then we can resume to the next values. We will delay 600 milliseconds. And if the value is specific value, we will turn on the LED to high. If not, we will turn on the LED to low. We can change this value by deciding which button will be pressed on the remote controller. Now that we understand how everything works, it's time to execute the code by using the Upload button. Once the upload is successful into the Arduino device, we can take the remote controller and start executing codes. Different button will bring different result. As we can see, when we press button, it will give us different values, just like that. The cool thing is that every time we press the button, the IR receiver will blink the LED to show us that the code is received, just like here. So every time the data is received, the LED on the IR sensor will blink. And that's basically how we use the IR controller using the remote controller as a transmitter. Once we understand how the IR receiver works, it's time to understand how we can use it in practice and connect it to our Raspberry Pi. 
First, let's remind ourselves that this is the IR receiver right here. In order to use it, we need the transmitter. For the transmitter, we will use the remote controller that is attached with the kit together. Once we press the button, the receiver will receive it and receive it the signal back to the Raspberry Pi, which will analyze it and print it as for in the console. Now, as we can see, the I receiver have three pins right here. One is signal, one is VCC, and one is GND. The signal pin is digital pins, which means we doesn't need any, we don't need any AD, ADC for that. Now, if we go back here into the breadboard and take a look at the connection, we can clearly see that it's connected to GPIO pin 17, which will be our digital read pin. Then we have VCC, which is 5 volt, and we have GND, which is just ground. Now, once we understand how does it work, let's try to go to our Raspberry Pi and use the remote controller to send the signal to the AI receiver and see how can we connect the information and get it from there. We are back into our Raspberry Pi. As we can see right here, we have our Raspberry Pi, our IR sensor, and our IR remote controller, which we will use for a transmitter device. Now, if you look carefully, we have the IDE right here. Inside the folder called SunFounder Sensor Kit for RPA2 folder, we can find lesson 9, which is IR receiver's lesson. Now, let's edit that lesson and understand. In this lesson, we will basically use the buttons to send IR signals to the IR receiver and count how many times we can get the signals through different buttons. Now, let's look at the code to understand how does it work. First, we use the RPI GPIO library as GPIO to import the GPIO library. We set up the IR pin as pin 11. Right here, as we remember, the yellow cable right here is pin number 11. We set count as 0 because we will count how many times we get the signal. First, we initialize it with 0. In the setup, we set up this GPIO set mode to GPIO board. Then, in the GPIO setup, we set the IR pin as GPIO in with pull up down as GPIO pull up. Then we have a count function called CNT, which basically means count. In the CNT function, we set global count to use this count to update it globally. We add one count and we print received infrared CNT equals to the current count. The count will grow the more signal we get. In the main loop, we add GPIO detect event with the callback CNT, means every time the IR sensor will get a signal from the remote, it will be activated through this add event detect and be sent to this CNT function. We have another function called destroy. Once we want to finish using the program, we will clean the GPIO so we can use it later on. In the main software, we set up the GPIO, we run the loop, and if keyboard interruption detected, we clean the GPIO and close the software. Now, once we understand how does it work, let's try to run the software and make it work. As you can see, once we run the software, nothing happens. That's because there are no IR signals around. But if we take the remote controller into our hand, and we point it toward the IR receiver and click a button, we can see the infrared is received and it starts counting. Every button have different timer to count, which means the counting will be different for each button. As we can see, the number increase, the more button we press, and it will count how many times and how many signals we will process through the IR receiver. Another very cool thing to mention is that the IR receiver have a small LED called D2. When we press, this LED will blink to show us that the IR signal was received, just as we can see here. I hope you learned something new during this lesson, and I will definitely see you next time.